Welcome everybody to this contribution guide for the Carpentries Glossary of Data Science Terms Glossario. This guide provides Glossario contributors step-by-step -step instructions for adding data science terms, definitions for existing terms, and translations for those terms into the glossary. Let's open up a web browser, log into your GitHub account, and then go to github.com slash carpentries slash glossario. This will open up the main Glossario repository hosted on GitHub. Before you start, please check the open issues and pull requests to see what terms and definitions others in the community might be working on, so to avoid duplicating effort. If you wish to contribute a translation for an existing term, please go to glossario.carpentries.org to browse the currently available terms and their existing definitions in your chosen language. If you see a term that isn't provided in the glossary, you can add that too, and we can cover this later on in this guide. To begin, head back to the GitHub website and the Glossario repository. Firstly, you need to fork the Glossario repository into your own GitHub account. And you do this by clicking on the fork button in the top right of the page. Please leave all options set as they are, checking that the fork is being made in your own GitHub account under your GitHub username. And then once you're happy, click create fork. After a few seconds, you should be taken automatically to your own fork. In my case, I have my fork in my own GitHub account. So you should see the fork of the Glossario repository under your own GitHub username. So in my case, github.com slash froggleston slash glossario. At the top of the page, there should be a piece of text that reads forked from carpentries slash glossario. This means that you have copied the main Glossario repository into your own GitHub account, and this is where you can make changes. So once the fork has been created, verify that the URL in the browser is github.com slash your username slash Glossario. Check that you are logged in to GitHub and hit the full stop or period key on your keyboard. This will open up the GitHub development environment, a helpful online code editor that we can use to make changes to the Glossario glossary and then save those changes. Again, this will only work if you're logged into GitHub. So if you're having any issues, please check this first. You should see a file browser appear on the left hand side of the window and an editor pane on the right, which by default will open the main readme from the repository so we can close this by clicking the cross on the tab in the right hand side pane. At the bottom of the page, there will be a button that says main. Click this and a pop-up will appear at the top of the page that says create a new branch. Within the box that appears, type in a new name for this branch. This should be something concise and in kebab case, that is lowercase alphanumeric characters separated by dashes. Call your branch, your username, then a dash, then patch, then a dash, and then the number one and hit enter. In the pop-up that appears, click switch to branch, which should be the default option. After a short while, the bottom at the button at the button at the bottom of the page should show the new branch name instead of main. Using the folder browser on the left, find and click on the glossary.yml file on the left hand side. This will open the glossary yaml file on the right hand side. YAML is a particular file format that is used for the glossary, and this file format contains all the terms and their localized definitions. 
the editor pane will show the YAML file contents. The file contains unique data science terms supplied next to the slug keyword. For example, right at the top of the file, we see the dash character, the word slug, a colon, and then the unique term that will be defined and then translated. This might be followed by references to other slugs in the glossary, but will always be followed by entries of two letter language codes, such as EN for English, AF for Afrikaans, ES for Spanish, and so on. Under each of these two letter language codes will be a term in quotes, which is the translated version of the slug term. There might be acronyms for this particular word, but there will always be a def keyword followed by a greater than arrow, and on the next line, the definition. Here we can see the definition of concatenate in the English language. Directly underneath, we can see the Afrikaans two-letter language code. Under this, we see the term of concatenate in Afrikaans and the definition of concatenate in Afrikaans. Indentation is important in YAML files. Note that the slug keyword is preceded by a dash and a space. And this is the first character on the line. The next line is indented, indented by two spaces. And this shows the ref or references to other terms if it exists, or the two letter language code within that slug reference block. Similarly, the term and def keywords are indented by four spaces and the definition itself by six spaces. Please check that when making your entries, they match this specification. You can check other entries to make sure yours matches the others. So each translated slug has language codes and under those codes, a translated term and a translated definition. Again, some entries have a ref keyword or an acronym keyword that allows you to specify other terms or acronyms for the terms you're wishing to define or translate. If you wish to add a translation of an existing term, find the slug you wish to translate by using Control F to find the slug in the file. For example, here I pick Control F, the find box appears in the top right hand side of the editor pane, and I'm going to type in the word accuracy and then click the bottom arrow to find the next match. Here we can see the accuracy slug followed by the set of translations. We have the English definition of the term accuracy, followed by the Spanish translation of the term accuracy, and then the definition in Spanish. Next is Swahili, translation for the term, and then the translation for the definition, and so on. If you were to add a new translation, say for Japanese, we would add our two letter language code, JP. On the next line, we need four spaces indent, then the keyword term, and then in quotes, the translation for the slug accuracy in Japanese, on the next line, the keyword def, followed by a greater than arrow. Hit enter to go to the next line. Two spaces again to indent to six spaces and then enter in the definition of the term, in this case, in Japanese. Once you've added a new translation, ensure that there is a empty line between the end of the final translation for a term and the start of a new slug. If we want to add a new term, 
that does not exist in the glossary, we can scroll all the way to the end of the file and start a new entry. Add in a dash at the start of the line, followed by a space, followed by the slug keyword, and then the term you wish to add. Say, for example, you want to add the slug ratio. Under this, add your two letter language code, in this case, English. Add the term in quotes, in this case, ratio. On the next line, the definition. And here we would add the definition of a ratio and copied and pasted from Wikipedia. We can add in the definition of the term ratio in English. In this case, the quantitative relation between two amounts showing the number of times one value contains or is contained within the other. Once you've added your new term or added a translation to an existing term, click the source control icon in the button menu on the left of the page underneath the magnifying glass icon. In the message box that appears, add in a short concise description of the change you have made. For example, add the ratio slug in English. Once you've done so, click the three line hamburger menu in the top left and click go to repository. This will take you back out of the GitHub development environment and back onto the GitHub website. You should now see a new box at the top of the screen containing the name of your branch and a button saying compare and pull request. Click this button and this will allow us to open a pull request with our change inside. Add a title. This will automatically be taken from your commit message but you can change it here if you wish. I'll leave mine as add ratio English definition. When you're adding your pull request, please make a note of reading the default pull request message here. If you're adding terms, change the pull request title to mention the terms added and language, we've done so, add ratio English definition. Or if there are a lot of them, the number of terms and language, for example, adding five terms into Afrikaans. We can see some examples below here. So what I will do, add ratio, definition, English, and we can remove the rest. Once you've done so, you can click create pull request. This will open a pull request against the main Carpentries Glossaria repository. Once you have opened your pull request, congratulations, you're done. A Glossaria reviewer will now take a look at your pull request and contact you if any further changes need to be made. Thank you very much for watching this short guide and happy contributing.